Welcome to the Union Aerospace Corporation, where we're weaponizing demons for a brighter tomorrow. Oh no, my Velcro came off. So I started this in hopes that it would be done in time for the release of Doom Eternal. That was over a week ago. But that's okay, because I will rip and tear until it is definitely passable at the very least. I'm taking some artistic liberties with the design, one to better fit my body, and also because there's elements of different armors that I like throughout the series. For instance, for the belt I'm using classic pouches. I don't know the best way of making these, that it won't look like tiny metal hams on my hips. I'm trying to make this in a short time frame, so I'm not worried about making an exact replica. The demons are at my doorstep, and I'm worried about the aesthetics of tiny bags. Yes. Materials I used include foam sheets and dowels, scissors, scrap fabric, acrylic paint, a very supportive cat making his video appearance, a sanding sponge, spicy air gun, and some kind of primer and stick em ups. Typically I'd use an adhesive like contact cement to connect the foam, but it is a literal pandemic outside. And aside from the scarcity of respiratory 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 And aside from the scarcity of respiratory masks, the closest place to buy contact cement is the human petri dish known as Walmart. Fortunately I sit upon a horde of hot glue sticks like some cheap crafty dragon and that works for me. It gets a bad rep among the cosplay community, but if it works, so be it. Sure, it hurts to see you used on something like fabric, but I'm used to pain. Go on. Add some more. Don't be shy. Put some more. Starting with the stomach, I'm using a single layer of craft foam as the base and building up the details piece by piece, referencing images from the game and concept art. Pieces that are symmetrical, I'm folding in half to double check before cutting them out and gluing them down to the previous layer of foam. And after years of stubborn refusal and self-sabotage, turns out marking the pieces with numbers helps for reassembling them later. For some of the bigger pieces, and where Doom Slayer is particularly thick, I moved up to the 5mm sheets while making sure everything still has a layer of foam behind it. Some of the small details were made using string and a hole puncher, and for cylindrical details like pipes, I just used the dowels. You can get smooth curves in craft foam by applying a heat gun and slowly pulling the foam down over a rounded surface. However, I am in need of my tear chest bulk than this, so I put a bra on my dress warm, apologized for the immodesty, covered in a masking tape, and then drew on a pattern. I'm labeling each piece so I don't accidentally swap them out and go cross-eyed, and then sticking them to 10mm foam to cut out bevel the edges and reattach in the same pattern. Because I'm using hot glue instead of contact cement, there's more room for error in attaching the pieces, such as gaps around the seams. So I'm going back over and filling any of those gaps with foam clay. Foam clay sands down about the same as 10mm high density foam, which is what I did after this and didn't videotape, so uh, yeah, I just took a sanding sponge and sanded it down. I built the rest of the torso using the same method of layering foam and detailing with the dowels. Having a dress form really helped with visualizing this, and keeping in mind that all of this is going to get covered up with more foam and paint and dirt, so no need to focus on it being pretty right now. Honestly, if it weren't for the dowels, this armor would look kind of butt. Oh. Using the thinner craft foam to wrap around a piece of 10mm foam gives the pouches the appearance of having space inside them and being able to open. Making real pockets would take longer, and it's simply a part of the natural order that, as a woman, I'm to be given pockets that don't actually function whatsoever. If you bend two pieces of foam while the glue between them is drying, it typically retains some of the shape. That's what I'm doing here for the belt sections. By continuing to add layers of foam, I now have surface area to start working on the shoulders. I've made foam shoulders before, but one of those times was just cutting the cups out of a size G bra. These have more of an angle to them that I can't quite figure out, so I'm just kind of winging the pattern here until something works out. I want the shoulders to be detached from the torso and able to move around, so I've started by sewing a little shoulder cover-up out of scrap fabric to use as the base for this section. The first shoulder piece was just cutting out two matching shapes and gluing them together along a single seam where my shoulder will be, and then trimming as needed. 
I filled in the space between the collar and shoulder with more foam and dowels, which were also very useful for making the larger bolts. The second shoulder I tried to make in a similar way, but with a rectangle section between the two pieces, but it was pretty much a flop. I hate having floppy shoulders, and my doctor says I have to stop, so I scrapped that and tried again. This time, I cut out the two sides like before, but with a little triangle section missing, which, when glued shut, will form a dart and cause the whole thing to bend to a new shape. Making darts in foam is really intimidating. Why did I clap? Why did I clap? I'm using a microphone. But I'm glad I tried because these came out way closer to the shape I had in mind. However, the seams are hideous, so I'm covering my shame with a strategic strip of matching foam. In fact, I'm covering nearly the whole thing with more foam. This whole project has just been making something ugly to layer in more stuff until it looks pretty. But instead of bonding with a mass of hot glue and foam on a personal level, let's move on to the priming and painting. I redid the inner shoulders with dowels and I like that much more, but it also helps the pauldron slide around better too. For priming, I just sprayed on two layers of Plasti Dip. There's a lot of primers you can choose, but I picked this one for the flexibility. After priming, I painted everything with standard acrylics. The look of grime comes from using a watered-down black paint to fill the seams and edges before wiping it away. The rust is a red-brown metallic paint added along the edges and points. And the silver paint is added along all the exposed edges to look as if the paint has been scraped off over time. After painting, I applied a gloss spray, which I wasn't certain about at first, but if my armor doesn't scream carnage sauna, I don't think I'm doing doom right. The gloves started with a fabric base that fits my arm before attaching all the foam pieces. It helps to have a stand-in for this, whether a mannequin arm or by padding something with foam or fabric until it's roughly the diameter and length of your arm, otherwise you're gonna have hot glue on your skin. Zero out of ten experience, I do not recommend it. Once everything was glued down, I cut open the glove and added velcro tabs. I'm also going to be adding velcro to the back of the collar to help keep this in place while wearing it. As for the actual chest piece, I decided to use an old polyester corset with the busk removed, and I'm using this as both lining and for lacing up the back, which is completely unfinished. But with more time and materials, I'd like to cover all this with even more foam armor as well as make the boots. After that just leaves the helmet. I am out of foam, but not out of ideas. I showed you my BFG, please respond. Now, as both secretary to the town mayor and doomslayer, it's not only my job to rip and tear, but to rip and care. Hey, how are you? Are you doing okay? So, I'm not actually fighting literal demons from hell, but we do often have to fight our inner demons. And sometimes that takes a little extra armor, and that's okay. The most important thing is that you're trying. I'm glad you're here. Anyway, I got a whole hour of sleep last night, so I'm ready to talk permits, pummeling, and uploading this video in time for Doom Eternal and actually be caught up for once. That's some good juice. Actually be caught up for once. So the video is a little later than planned, but I appreciate you watching it anyway. If you want more Doom and Animal Crossing content, my Patreon rewards for April are exactly that. Big thanks to all my patrons and not the demons. Haven't you been playing a while? Don't you think you should take a break?